It took incredible courage for Aaron Fisher to reveal the most painful secret in his life, that Jerry Sandusky, the revered football legend, is a monster. At just 15, he was standing with his mother in the principal's office when they say they were told to go home. They said Jerry has a heart of gold, that he wouldn't do those type of things. Here I am, beside my mom, crying, telling them, telling her, look, they don't believe me. I knew they wouldn't. But his mother does believe him, and she says she makes it clear to the principal she's not going home. She's going to war. They said that, that everybody was upset and that we just needed to go home and think about how this would affect our family. How do you make sense of that? I didn't make sense of it. I was swearing at them, and I was, I was really mad, and I told him to get his backpack. We are leaving. They went to CYS, Child Youth Services. Aaron told just the least bit of what he had endured to psychologist Mike Gillum. It was obvious to me immediately that he was very upset that something had, in fact, happened to him. CYS called Aaron's school to make sure Sandusky was kept away from kids. Gillum says he was shocked when he heard that Principal Karen Probst had told them to go home. School officials are all mandated reporters. School. No discretion. No discretion. No go home and think about it. No. They tried to dissuade them from contacting the authorities. Even more curious, he says, only after Dawn said she was going for help did CYS receive a call from the school. Then they call. Then they call. Sounds like CYA. Yes, it does. His agency also notified the state police, which launched an investigation. It seemed Sandusky was about to get arrested. Usually one cop comes, does the interview, and within days to a month or so, there's going to be an arrest. Yes. But that didn't happen. Gillum says it seemed Jerry Sandusky was given the benefit of the doubt at every turn. Aaron writes in his book that over the course of three years, police asked him to retell his story four times. He had to face two grand juries, and yet no arrest. Prosecutors said they needed more victims to charge Sandusky. To Aaron, it meant his suffering wasn't enough. What part of you made you feel, no, it's, it's me? Every part that for as long as it took. The broken promises, the numerous amount of state troopers. He's gonna be arrested on this date to this date, okay? This date to this date comes, nothing. And the whole time, Jerry's out there. Yeah, he's not even in jail. Randy Feathers was the lead investigator on Aaron's case. Help me with this, Mr. Sure. Feathers. You say you knew this guy was a pedophile. Absolutely. And you leave him out there for years. How many kids may he have molested during that time? Well, we, we did do some precautions. I mean, obviously, we did what some precautions? surveillance. Do you know for sure that he never molested another kid during well, the of years? Of course not. I mean, that's, that's a, it's not a perfect world. We did the best we could. That's not that the best you could would have been mm -hmm. an, an arrest. Not true. Sandusky was interviewed by CYS and laughed off the allegations, painting Aaron as a troubled kid whom he was just trying to help. Ironically, Aaron was the one being treated as a criminal. His name was leaked at school as the person who made accusations about the beloved Sandusky. He says he was bullied relentlessly. Did you start to feel like, you know, I just don't matter. Jerry matters. Yep, and that, that upset me the most. You start to doubt yourself. I thought maybe it'd be easier to, to kind of take myself out of the equation. I was extremely extremely suicidal. You felt that because of what you were getting from everybody else, it might be better if Aaron just wasn't around. Yep. Pretty much my mom would hate me for that, but there was numerous amount of times that I've actually tried. You know, I wore long sleeve shirts because I cut myself. You know, I, I did a whole bunch of things that I wouldn't have normally done. Why wasn't Aaron enough? It's easy to second guess now, but back three years ago, Jerry Sandusky walked on water, literally walked on water, was a saint. And we were going to send this 16-year-old kid up against an icon. We needed more evidence. I don't get it. Why? Why is raping one kid hundreds of times not enough? We had to prosecute this. Chris, if we could have arrested Jerry Sandusky the first day that Aaron came in, 
I'd put handcuffs on myself. One thing's for sure. The case only really gained momentum when Mike McQueary, a Penn State football coach, testified he witnessed Sandusky molesting a boy in a university locker room. Soon, seven more victims emerged. Then, on December 7th, 2011, more than three years since Aaron came forward, just after his 18th birthday, Sandusky was arrested. What kind of birthday present was that? It was... It was a good one. I was happy, yes, but I was more crying and, you know, just... I wasn't expecting it. Sandusky was convicted on 45 of 48 counts, but that wasn't the end for Aaron. There were still others who had never been held to account, others whom Aaron felt had betrayed his trust, starting with the people at his school who say they reported his case promptly. It's Chris Cuomo from ABC News. We called and sent letters to school supervisors asking if any action had been taken as a result of Aaron. Not a single response. So we headed to his school to try to get Aaron some answers. Mr. Tershetta? Please turn the camera off. Chris Cuomo from ABC News. We've been trying to get in touch with you. Please, please turn the camera off. Steve Tershetta, the man Aaron says pulled him out of class all those times for Sandusky. Tershetta would later tell a grand jury he had suspicions about Sandusky, though he didn't realize he was molesting kids. Please turn the camera off at this time. This is where I'm Sandusky asking. was allowed to get at this I'm kid asking. time and time again after you said to I'm a grand you. jury you were suspicious of him. Turn the camera off now, so you got nothing to say to Aaron. You got nothing to say to his mother. Please, please turn the camera off. Nothing at all. Please turn the camera off. Please turn the camera off. That's all you got. And then there was Principal Karen Probst, who believed the best response to a sexual assault allegation, according to Aaron and Don, was to tell them to go home. She is still the principal at the school, and she was right on time for work, and we no, were waiting. You know Ms. Probst, why are you moving so fast now when you move so slowly when Aaron needed your help? I don't understand this. Why would you avoid these questions? They can sit there and pretend to act like they love kids and will protect kids. That's a bunch of bull. <laughs> As for Jerry Sandusky, he was sentenced just last week to 30 to 60 years in prison. But he did have one last message for Aaron. A young man who is dramatic, a veteran accuser, and always sought attention, started everything. It began with a veteran accuser. Who was that? Pretty much that whole thing was directed towards me. And made you feel like crap. But maybe there will be some partial vindication. People in Pennsylvania are now rallying behind him and demanding an investigation into how this case was handled. Aaron is now trying to get his life back on track. He plans to go to college, and one day he wants to be a state trooper, a protector. But he still has profound doubts about himself. There's probably still people out there that don't believe that Jerry Sandusky could do this, and they might think I'm a horrible person for it. Do you know that you're good? I do, but the emotions and effects of other people and their actions of other people are kind of shying me away from that. You're a good person. I like to believe that. If you are persistent and you continue to fight for what you know is right and what you absolutely think and know is right, then good will prevail and you'll get justice out of it. Just yesterday, Jerry Sandusky appealed his court conviction and is asking for a new trial. As for Aaron, we wish him the very best. Around here, he isn't known as victim number one. He is hero number one.